right, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, the chair of this committee. I would, I would like to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee and are present today. We have Council Members Gibson, Barron, Deutsch, Kuhl, Landsman, Levin, Miller, Reynoso, Richards, Traeger, Chair Adams, Chair Moya, and we also have been joined by Council Member Kozowitz. I'm sorry, and we also, we also have uh, uh, Gredenchik. <laughs> Today, uh, from our land use subcommittees, we'll vote on three projects. We will vote to approve LUs 545, an application submitted by the HPD for an amendment to the Blake Hendricks Affordable Home Ownership NIHOP Urban Development Area Project, previously approved by Council Resolution 1263 of 2017. The amendment would allow HPD to forgive all or a portion of the land debt to reduce the taxable consideration of the homes. The application relates to a cluster of properties in Councilmember Barron's district in Brooklyn. We will also vote on LUs 546, 547, and the preconsidered LUs 20205, 116, HAM, all related to the NME 3 West 140th and West 150th Street, UDAP, approving HPD's acquisition of property located at 207-209 West 140th Street and 304-308 West 150th Street. The designation of an urban development action area and project for such properties and an exemption from property taxes. The, uh, these actions will facilitate a mixed-use development containing approximately 52 affordable housing units in Councilmember Perkins District in Manhattan. We will also be voting with modifications to borough-based jail applications. This project is comprised of 13 related items, preconsidered LUs 513 through 516, and LUs 518 through 526. They include a zoning tax amendment creating a citywide special permit for borough-based jail facilities, a site selection application for borough-based jail facilities in Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn. Four special permits, one for each borough-based jail facility, three city map change application affecting certain streets and public places in in Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan. An acquisition of property for a Manhattan borough-based jail facility and three action related to the provision of affordable housing near the Bronx borough-based jail facility, a zoning tax amendment, a zoning map change, and a UDAP area and project de designation and disposition. In addition to modify the four special permits, we will also be modifying preconsidered uh, LU515 to strike MIH option two and will add the deep affordability option to MIH option one. We heard the demands from reform from criminal justice advocates as well as concerns from local communities about the scale and location of the proposed borough-based jail facilities. In addition to the resources being allocated to prevent incarceration and programming to assist those who are incarcerated, which was discussed at our landmark subcommittee by Chair Adams. As a result, the council's modifications, the high intensity of the four buildings are being reduce significantly so these new buildings would better integrate into their communities. I know there have been disagreements on this plan. Both opponents and supporters have been very emotional in their advocacy, but I believe it is important for us to disagree respectfully and move forward today to tackle new and different challenges together tomorrow. Are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? All right, seeing none, I will call for a vote to, uh, I will call for a vote uh, to approve LU's numbers 545-547, the preconsiders LU's 20205-116 HAM, and to approve with modifications, I have described preconsiders 513 through 516 and LU's 518 through 526. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. Uh, I will be voting no on 518 and 519, and yes on the rest. Lanceman. Aye. Richards. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on LU 545, it's a project in my district. And I do want to say that um, I support the project and I'm pleased to know that, to share with you that this is an infill 
home ownership project, and 545 provides for nine two-family houses and for four three-family houses, and that the income requirement for those who want to apply for these homes is from 80 to 100% of the AMI. So I want us to know that we can provide affordable housing and homes to people in our community. As regards the bill for the borough-based jails, I wanted to be clear that I supported closing Rikers. I don't want to get it confused. I support closing Rikers, and my vote in that regard reflected that. But as concerns the borough-based jails, I'm not supporting that. I think that it does not address the issue, which is that this justice system, as it's called, continues to have black and brown persons detained at rates that do not reflect what it is in our communities, in the totality of our society, and that judges continue to have judicial discretion to be able to decide who they will, in fact, detain and who will, they will, in fact, let go. And most often, black and brown people are the ones that are detained, and those who are more affluent and those who are white in fact, are not detained. I think that, just to move quickly, I think we've got to challenge and change the racial discri discrimination basis for our criminal justice system, and we need to make sure that prior to persons getting involved in the criminal justice system, that we're doing all that we can economically to have job creation, not just job training, after you've been trained, you've got to be able to apply those skills to get jobs and to be able to have economic development and to be able to make sure that our communities have the opportunity also for entrepreneurial programs. The intervention and the mentoring and the restorative justice programs that are so important have got to be implemented prior to us building new jails. We've got to change the culture that already exists and we've got to make sure that the programs that are in place address that. So I'm voting aye on all, with the exception of 513 through 516 and 518 through 526. Thank you. I, I also want to recognize that we've been joined by uh, Councilmember Diaz and Councilmember Deutsch. Deutsch. Uh, now on. Uh, LU 513 through 516 and 518 through 526, nine the rest. Cool. Uh, I will I. Levin. Uh, I just want to say that I forgot to thank in my prior remarks my colleagues Karen Kozlowitz, Diane Ayala, and Margaret Chin um, for uh, their uh, incredible leadership. They are, they are truly my heroes in this process, so I want to thank them. And with that, oh, and I also want to thank um, the members of the, the Lippman Commission who actually did a tremendous amount of work laying the groundwork for this. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Miller. Aye. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Reynoso to explain his vote. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Rikers Island is a glaring monument to mass incarceration, a physical manifestation of a system based on racism, oppression, and violence. Tweaking around the edges of such a system is insufficient. The system must be torn down completely. I'm incredibly proud to be taking a first step in this process today and to have been a part of the council's efforts to close Rikers since Speaker Melissa Margarito proposed it in 2016. We have to seize this moment to push the conversation much further than it has gone to date. This is about people's lives, not buildings. Our goal should be to get the jail population as low as possible um, while pushing the administration to meet that objective. It is our responsibility to work tirelessly to ensure that by the time the shovels go into the ground, that we don't need to build as many beds as originally approved. Ultimately, it is my hope that we reach a day when no one needs to be put in jail. To that end, the administration must go further than it has today to invest in the communities most impacted by the effects of over-policing and mass incarceration. As co-chair of the Brooklyn delegation, I will be fighting 
for significant funding increases in places like East Flatbush, Brownsville, and East New York for programs related to job training, re-entry, and violence prevention. We cannot invest billions in new jail facilities without investing in the things we know our communities need in order for residents to thrive. The City Council has a solemn obligation to hold this plan accountable. The history of criminal justice reform is littered with broken promises. We cannot ask people to trust us. We must actually deliver on everything that is being discussed here today. I want to thank the advocates who have put an incredible amount of work into ensuring the dream of closing Rikers becomes a reality. There is much more work left to do or to be done, and I hope we can continue collaborating to realize a more just and equitable society for the next generation. So thank you for allowing me to uh, make that statement, and I vote aye on all. Traeger. Gordenchik. Mr. Chairman, permission to explain my vote. Councilmember Gordenchik. Take my glasses well. off, this is important. Uh, the issue before us today is one of immense importance to our great city. Over the past quarter century, we have seen historic reductions in crime in New York City and a corresponding reduction in the number of people detained by the city. It is also obvious, based on numerous port reports, that the current New York City prison facilities are, to be charitable, outdated and dangerous. The newest facility having been constructed on Rikers Island 30 years ago, which in terms of modern penology, is eons ago. The road that has led us here today has been quite challenging. Information has been caught hard to come by from the administration, and as recently as hearings on the preliminary budget several months ago, we basically had no information. No cost estimates, no hard numbers of people expected to be detained, detained nothing. We were essentially left to guess. Today, the guessing has been replaced by better, but albeit not perfect information. I am also greatly troubled by the enormous amounts of money that are to be expended on the proposed new jails, money that some rightfully argue would be better invested in our communities. However, to me it is not an either or. This great city can and will do both things. I have been for closing Rikers Island and replacing it with borough-based jails for some time. I have been undecided on this particular plan until yesterday when I received news that allowed me to vote in good conscience for this plan. Anyone who has read the reports and seen the news regarding Rikers Island knows and should understand the moral crisis our city is facing. Today, we are going to take important steps to begin to remedy that crisis. In my home borough of Queens, the site selected is literally attached to the criminal court building. Prisoners will be brought to and from the courthouse through an underground passage connecting the two buildings. For decades, prisoners were trekked through the communities of Queens and other boroughs to be taken to court. This will all end making for a safer, less costly, more environmentally friendly, and more, most importantly, more humane means of transporting prisoners. I am voting in favor of this plan, but I am still greatly concerned about holding the cost to construct these new facilities in check. We must also ensure that the impact that they have on the Kew Gardens and Briarwood communities in Queens and the other neighborhoods they are situated in around the city is kept to an absolute minimum. We owe it to the people of the city to do that as they are fitting, footing the entire bill for these new jails. I thank you for indulging me, Mr. Chairman, and with that, I vote aye on all. Adams. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote, Mr. Chairman. Councilmember Diaz to explain his vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a problem the, with the, your uh, situation and the way in which this committee, is supposed to be a progressive committee, has allowed this procedure to go. You're putting four ULEPs in one. Each county is supposed to have their own ULEPs. But no, you just put four ULEPs in one. And then you're building here in, uh, in Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, Brooklyn, but you are not building any one on Staten Island. But the city council member from Staten Island will vote on my euro in my district or in my community. Because you, chairman, and the member of this committee has allowed four Europe's in one. And that is ridiculous, 
that has never been done, that is selling out the community. Second, public, public school in, in, in our community, in our neighborhood, there are pits. Public school in our neighborhood, they need money, they need, but there's no money. There is no money to educate our children. There is no money to fix our school. There is no money to get air conditioning and nice equipment to our children. But there is money, $11 billion, to, to build four, four new, uh, new, new, new buildings. Nature, oh, progressive. You go around killing nature because all the things the wrong doing that doing to our community. There's no boiler. They're going through a winter with no boiler. There is no no uh, no way to solve the problem. And our members that were resident in Natcha, they had to suffer every single winter because there's no money. But you're progressive. You go around, oh we got to help it. But there's no money for that. But they are eleven billion dollars to build four new buildings. Staten Island, as I say, been exempted. Why? Why is Staten Island has been exempted and we are voting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? What is going to happen when we close Rackets Island? What's going to happen with that land? What is the purpose? Who's going to get the control of that land? What's, what's happening? What? How come nobody knows what's going to happen there? Why housing inmate in a high-rise building will make it better for the health? Rackets Island build a ballpark, football. They have outdoor. They could do. They could have the best health in Rackets Island. There would be outdoor uh, activities. Uh, they could. Play ball, build, build, build a, a baseball field, a tracking field. They will have their life. If, that's, if, if, if what you build there is a hotel, what better to build it there? To protect, to protect the inmate. But you know, you say, no, 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 let's, 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 let's house it in a high rise building that they can't even move. Like I said, we have fix it, make it beautiful for them. And then, in the Bronx, Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen, in the Bronx, the community planning board of the area unanimously, unanimously voted against this. In the Bronx, the community planning board, the Bronx Board of President is against this. The community of the area is against this. But I see members, even from the delegation from the Bronx, being undecided. What is there to be undecided? What is there to be undecided? Why are you voting yes for this? You're not helping the inmates. You are going against your community. And I am a conservative. I've been criticized for being conservative. But you remember, you are progressive. Show it now. If you are progressive, protect your community, protect the senior citizen. I mean, the senior citizen in, 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 in Castle Hill, in Castle Hill Project, the senior citizen there, go ask them how go every year they go with no heat, with no, with, with no, with no heat and no, air, and no air conditioning during, during the whole year. Why? There's no money to protect the senior citizen. There's no money to give them service, but there is $11 billion to build four new houses. Mr. Chairman, my vote is no, no, no in everything. Thank you very much. Moya. Aye. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Council Member Gibson, six minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon to all of my colleagues. I am thankful that we're here. Um, this afternoon, the City Council will take an incredible, bold, and courageous step to finally close an institution that has been a systemic environment of abuse, of mistreatment, and violence all around. 
for far too long, Rikers Island has been a sad culture of violence for detainees, for the uniform staff, and everyone who works there on the island every single day. After months of strong advocacy by those most affected, by the advocacy groups, community-based organizations, legal service providers, and so many others, we are presented with this unique opportunity to do something different, to finally address criminal justice reform and change the culture and atmosphere by which we reform, we rehabilitate, and we reshape the lives of those accused of crimes in our city. Today, we act on an issue that has plagued far too many communities of color and young men and women of color, many of my own constituents in the Bronx. Understand, my colleagues, exactly how we came to this point today. 20 years ago, the incarceration rate at Rikers was 20,000 detainees. Today, we're at 7,000. Crime rates spiked in the 1980s and the 1990s as we were hit with the crack and the drug epidemic. And now today, the lowest numbers of crime around our city every year. This body, this city council, has historically invested for 20 years in our ATI and ATD and reentry initiative, which is proven work providing alternatives for young men and women that are involved in the criminal justice system, and we have saved lives through this ATI initiative. The New York City Crisis Management System, which we started this council in 2011, five neighborhoods to focus on a holistic approach to addressing gun violence with wraparound services for clients to succeed, not be statistics, but succeed. And now today, $30 million invested, 22 catchment areas across all five boroughs. Couple that with supervised release programs, more re-entry services, restorative justice work, plus the new state policies that will take effect soon, such as bail reform, speedy trial, and open discovery. Colleagues, we are on our way to further reducing our jail population and giving our constituents a more humane and safer environment that is closer to home. Nothing that we do in this council is ever a perfect plan. It's filled with flaws, criticisms, and certainly many of us, including myself, have been frustrated along the way during this process. If we do nothing, we allow this abusive incarceration system to remain in place for the next decade or two or three. Who has the kind of time to waste when lives are at stake? And we have an opportunity today to change the dynamics of our criminal justice system. I choose to be on the right side of history for my constituents who live the everyday reality of today's Rikers Island. I choose to improve the conditions by which those who are detained and also all the staff who work there in the jails every day. They all deserve better, and it is our responsibility to do right by them. That's what we were elected to do. This proposal before us is beyond our egos. It's beyond our personal views, and simply put, it's transformational. This proposal is much bigger than the construction of four buildings, my colleagues, but rather it is a firm commitment that we are bold enough, courageous enough, deliberate enough, and strong enough to make decisions that will have a profound impact on our communities and our city for generations to come. So don't get anything twisted about what we are doing here today. So I want to thank and acknowledge all of the advocates. Many have already been called, but certainly our former council speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, our Chief Justice, Jonathan Lippman, and the Lippman Commission, 
Just Leadership, the Closed Rikers Campaign, Beyond Rosies, the Catal Center, all of our ATI and ATD providers, Bronx Connect, and so many others. The City Council, our speaker, my courageous colleagues, Steve Levin, Diana Ayala, Margaret Chen, and Karen Koslowitz. I thank you for being committed and dedicated to what we are doing here today. And so it is my firm belief that this is the right thing to do at the right time, and I am going to stand with my people and my constituents and my families, and I'm voting yes on today's proposal and everything on today's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilmember King. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember King to explain his vote. Um, I'll be brief. Um, but I will say um, I'm not in favor of today's plan. Um, I've asked the question over a number of years, how does closing Rikers correct all the issues that we have in the criminal justice system, to over-policing, to not having enough DAs, or 18B attorneys, excuse me, or uh, judges or spaces that are in the court system. We, th we refer to a, how Khalif Browder the system failed him, but Cl Rikers Island wasn't a problem for Khalif Browder. It was the judicial system that, that, that hurt him. He should have never stayed in Rikers Island for three years, period. And that's a flaw in the judicial system, not in the correction system. So while we're trying to figure out what does incarceration look like for the city of New York, I just ask my colleagues to really dig, dig down and deep, because when I saw a plan that showed a new, st new form of incarceration with Wi-Fi, you're able to order your food and get TVs and decorated cells. I'm saying this is desensitizing going to jail. And jail shouldn't be a place that we're happy. A jail, a jail should be a holding place until you are found guilty of a crime, not treated as a prison that someone should be there for even three years. Something's, something's flawed with that system. And if you're telling me that by 2026, then about 10 years, all this will come to fruition, then who are you actually building these buildings, these jails for? It's not for the person that's in, in lockup right now. I see it as a, for the nine-year-old who's walking down the street. By the time they get 17, we're looking at locking them up. So I have a real problem with how this whole conversation has been played out and rolled out. And if you really want Rikers Island because you want to change it up, I think it's just a property grab. And if you want to then be honest in that conversation, but don't fault the men and women in this jail system because correction officers want safe jails too. And if you want to rehabilitate somebody, then you know what, how about helping them before they get in lockup? How about them spending the money to improve our jails and take care of our nine-year-olds and our kindergartners and our high school kids so they'll never see the inside of a jail? If you, want to re if you want to educate a person, you don't have to send them to jail. If you want to save somebody's life, you don't have to send them to jail. I just think this whole conversation has been misdirected and I think it's been flawed and I think it has been, has, it's been disingenuous from the beginning. And I, and, I, and, I'm, and I pray for everyone that's in here because we, sh we should be great enough as elected leaders that we shouldn't have to negotiate for a community center or more housing in our district to take a jail. If our communities are saying we don't want it, then we have a responsibility to those who elected us and put us in, it put us in here to negotiate that and not be bullied into saying you got to take a jail in order to get a community center or get more housing. Something just wrong of how this whole has been rolled out. And I end with this. I'm a little disheartened because last week we were forced into saying there will never be any more incarceration jails, anything built on Rikers Island after 2026. And we got that information the day of. I'm not faulting the land use committee, but whoever's plan was, it was it just wasn't right. Again, if it's a property grab, then call it for what it is. But don't manipulate the conversation to get us voting on things that doesn't suit the, the neighbors that these jails are being placed in. With that all being said, I'm voting no today, and I urge everyone else moving forward to do so. Thank you. Today's land use agenda, land use items 513, 514, 515, 516, 520, 521, 522, 523, 524, 525, and 526 have been adopted by the committee 12 in the affirmative, four in the negative, and no abstentions. And land use items 518 and 519 are adopted by the committee 11 in the affirmative, five in the negative, and no abstentions. All right, I would like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.